I'm Michael Lazell with Enonic. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a new project to build your own apps for the Enonic Experience platform using the XP Toolbox. Next, I'll briefly explain the auto-generated project folders and files. I'll also cover how to build your apps with Gradle and deploy an app manually and automatically. Then I'll demonstrate a good setup for working with multiple projects. Finally, I'll show you how to open your project with an IDE. If you're going to follow along, you'll need a text editor or an IDE. You'll also need to have the Enotic XP Java distribution ready to go on your development machine. Watch our development environment installation video if you haven't already. The first step is to create a folder for the project files. Find a convenient location outside of your XP installation and create a folder named My App. I keep all my projects in this source code folder. Enotic XP comes with a CLI toolbox. One of these command line interface tools is init project, which will initialize a new Enotic XP project from an existing project in a Git repository. You can find starter kits on the Enotic market designed specifically to work for the toolbox init project. Each of the starter kits will create folders and files with the Rails-like project structure required for Enotic XP apps. For this demonstration, I'm using the starter vanilla project, which has only the bare minimum files and folders. First, I'll run the toolbox init project with the help command to see what options are available. Open a terminal and change directory to the toolbox folder of your XP installation. For Mac and Linux users, enter dot slash toolbox.sh help init project. For Windows, use toolbox.bat instead of toolbox.sh. These are all the options for init project. I'll run it again, but this time I'll fill in all the options to use the starter vanilla and I'll explain each option as I go. The dash A option is only needed when the git repo requires basic authentication. The starter vanilla project is public, so I won't need to use dash A here. The dash C option can be used to get a specific branch or commit from the git repo. The default is the latest commit on the master branch, which is what I want, so I'll skip dash C. The dash D option is for the destination path to the project folder where the files will be created. If you don't use dash D, then the project files will be created in the current folder, and I don't want to clutter up my toolbox with project files. The dash N option specifies the name of the app. The name should be all lowercase with no spaces, and use dots instead of dashes. Choose your app name carefully, since changing it after the app is deployed can cause problems. A good name will be something like com.companyname.appname. For this project, I'll use com.company.myapp. The dash R option specifies the Git repository that will be used. This can be a full URL to any project's Git repo. If it's on GitHub, then you can just use the account name slash repo name. In fact, this defaults to the Enotic account, so for any Enotic repo, you can just use the repo name. The repo I'm using here is Starter Vanilla. The dash V option allows you to specify an initial version. The default project version will be 1.0.0 snapshot, and that's fine with me, so I'll skip dash V. Now all the options are entered, and as I run the script, you can see the project files and folders appear as they're created. Notice the Gradle folder and files. Projects are built with Gradle, and with these files included, you won't need to install Gradle to use it. When it's time to build the project, just run the Gradle W script, but don't do this yet. First, open the Gradle.properties file. This is where you can change the app version when you're ready to tag a release. You should also check that the XP version matches the version of XP that you are using. Now take a look at the build.gradle file. This is a very important file. The dependencies section is where you'll include all the libraries and web jars your project will use. Many existing libraries are listed here, but commented out. Only uncomment the libraries your project will need. You can find more libraries on the Enotic Market, including a menu lib for working with menus, reCAPTCHA for cutting down on spam, text encoding, GeoIP, and others. For most projects, you will want to include our Utilities Library, which has many useful functions that will speed up your development. Check our documentation for details. Include the Utilities Library by adding this line. Check our GitHub page for the latest version. You can create your own libraries and include them the same way. Just make sure to add your repo in the repository sections of the build.gradle file. 
All of the code for your project will be created under the Resources folder at SRC Main Resources. At the moment, these are mostly just empty folders. I'll give a brief description of what these folders are for. The documentation has a lot more detailed information. The admin folder has subfolders for creating custom admin tools and widgets. Read more about those in the documentation. The application SVG file should be replaced with your own app icon. The application XML file is where you can enter an app description. Both the app icon and the description will be visible in the application's admin tool and in the content studio. The assets folder is where you put the CSS, front end JavaScript, images, and any other public resource. The lib folder is for your own JavaScript libraries with custom utility functions that will be used throughout your project. You can invoke Java code in your JavaScript libraries. You can save any custom Java code that your project might use in the SRC main Java folder. The services folder is for server-side JavaScript controllers that are accessible at a fixed URL with the pattern underscore slash service slash app name slash service name. The site folder contains the site XML file and all the site related subfolders. Enotic XP projects can be built by running the Gradle W script from the command line. Change directory to the root of your project and enter dot slash gradlu build. Windows users don't need the dot slash. This could take a minute the first time it's run while the dependencies are downloaded. A new build folder will appear which contains the libs folder with the project's jar file. There are several ways to deploy the app. It could be deployed locally by moving this jar file into the XP Home Deploy folder. XP will automatically detect the jar file and install the app. Using gradlu deploy will build the jar file and automatically move it to the home deploy folder in one step. But this only works if the XP Home environment variable has been set. More on this later. Start XP with the XP install bin server.sh script. Use server.bat for Windows. Now point your browser to localhost port 8080 and log in with su and password. Open the Applications tool and notice the My App application has been installed. Because this project is completely blank, you won't see any schemas or components listed. Take a look at our documentation's My First App tutorial and watch our other app development videos to get started. As a developer, I highly recommend that you also install the Content Viewer and the Content Hive apps from the Marketplace tab. You might be thinking that building and redeploying your project every time you make small changes during development would get tedious. You'd be right, but not to worry. Starting Enotic XP in dev mode will update your project almost instantaneously. For example, you can change a controller, CSS, or HTML file and then refresh the page and instantly see the results of your changes without redeploying or restarting. But dev mode doesn't catch everything. You will need to build and redeploy your project if you make changes to the Gradle files, Java files, or libraries, and if you delete or change the name of a component. To start Enotic XP in dev mode, just run the startup script with dev. Whenever I start working on a new project, I usually want to keep it isolated from other apps I'm building. Otherwise, you could end up with a lot of unrelated sites and content that will clutter up your installation. Now I'll demonstrate how to set up a folder structure that will make it easy for you to work on multiple projects in the future. The key to keeping your projects isolated is the XP installation's home folder. The home folder contains all the files for a specific instance of Enonic XP, including the repository, logs, and configuration files. You can create a copy of the XP installation's home folder for each new project and then tell XP which home folder to use by setting the XP home environment variable. I keep a home folder for each project in this XP homes folder. I'll make a new one here called my app and paste the home folder into it. It's important that your XP homes are outside of both your project folder and your installation folder. Before starting Enotic XP, set the XP home environment variable to the path of your project's home folder. On Mac and Linux, use export XP home equals path to the home folder. Whenever you make a new XP home folder, make sure to delete its repo folder to make sure you won't have any leftover content from another instance. I'm also going to delete the work folder and the logs. 
Now, when XP starts, you can confirm in the console log which home folder is being used. Most developers will use an IDE, so I'll show you how to set that up. I'm using the free community edition of IntelliJ. Open your project's build.gradle file with the IDE. This will create some IDE project files. The initial default should be OK, but check that it's using the project's Gradle wrapper. Once it's open, check the project structure to ensure it's using Java 8. Now you can create your own project files for content types, pages, and other components. This wraps up the project setup video. Take a look at our YouTube channel for other app development videos. Check our documentations, My First App Tutorial. It explains how to make app components like pages and parts. Post your questions and get help on our forum at discuss.enonic.com. We look forward to seeing all the wonderful things you will create with Enonic XP.